and we're gonna start with uh, a classic Italian sofrito, which is uh, simply carrots, onions, and celery, which we need to cook down. So, step number one, let's get our <coughs> pan nice and hot, a good drizzle of extra virgin olive oil, a little bit of unsalted butter. Meanwhile, I've got also some veal stock, I've got some uh, tomato, whole peeled tomato, fresh tomato left uh, around will be just fine. I got some fresh peas, of course, frozen people that done the job as well. I got some garlic, parsley, and lemon. It's gonna, we're gonna make a lovely gremolata. It's a classic additional sauce to put on top of your ossobuco. Very, very traditional. I got a little bit of flour. As we need to do every single time, we need to dust the ossobuco in flour. It's gonna create a lovely crust once we're searing our veal ossobuco. And it's gonna allow all the lovely juices to stay within the ossobuco, and it's gonna maintain it lovely and succulent. Okay, so we're gonna start by adding onions, which I chopped fairly roughly and diced because they're going to cook for several hours so they don't need to be cut up too small. Then I'm going to go in with the carrots and then finally with some celery. Now all we want to do is just to try to get them to cook down a little bit and get all the lovely natural sugar out of it to create a, a little bit of caramelization. That is going to add a lovely sweetness to our tomato without having to add any sugar to our tomatoes. I'm a little bit against adding sugar when we're cooking with tomatoes. Tomatoes, if they're good quality as we chose today, they shouldn't really require any additional sugar. Try to get a little bit of sweetness out of the caramelization of your vegetable rather than adding any sugar. As the vegetables are cooking, next step. We're just gonna start seasoning the ossobuco. Be generous with salt and pepper. On both sides, obviously. And as soon as I do that, I'm gonna dust them into flour. Just a little bit, not too much. Shake the flour off it and then start positioning the ossobuco right in the middle of your vegetables. This is how simple this is. Try not to let them sit on top of the vegetable, but I do like to get them cooked all together. You can obviously perhaps see your dose on the side, but I don't really see the point of doing it. I love the idea that everything cooks together. It's so traditional, so simple, nothing fancy so far. All right, give your ossobuco a bit of a shake. And all I'm looking for right now, actually, we're just gonna pick up the ossobuco, have a little bit of a look, and looking for that lovely, nice golden color, which is not quite there yet, so obviously we've got a couple of minutes. My very next step is gonna be some uh, good quality, good wine. And always make sure you use, make an effort using some good quality white wine. If it's not good enough to be drunk, it's, you know, you shouldn't really be using that for cooking either. So don't spend $100 for your bottle of wine, but you know, make an effort of getting something quite nice. We're gonna deglaze the pan, and then we're gonna go right in with our veal stock. Veal stock, chicken stock, any sort of stock uh, should do. If you really don't have any stock whatsoever, even a little bit of uh, water will do. The idea is just to create an extra moisture to allow our lovely osobuco to cook in nice and even. It's kind of a braised style, that's pretty much what we're doing here. Then I got some tomato. Tomato perhaps is a bit optional. It is a classic traditional recipe, but back in the days, actually, it wasn't cooked with tomato. Uh, in these days, I, you know, my mom kind of made me grow up with osobuco with a touch of redness through it. So I love always to have some leftover tomatoes, or I always have a can of uh, uh, tomato in the pantry, and I love to add that additional lovely red uh, uh, color and deep flavor to my osobuco. Okay, you're picking up enough color, so I'm happy to turn them around. Another two to three minutes on uh, on this side. Meanwhile, while all of this is happening, I'm gonna make my gremolata. Gremolata, it's uh, it's very very simple. All we need to do is to grab some fresh basil, some garlic, and some lemon zest. I'm gonna chop this pretty pretty fine. And if you can do this a couple of hours in advance, let me tell you, it's gonna increase the flavor so much and it's gonna taste a million bucks. So I strongly advise you to do this perhaps as a very, very first job when you step in the kitchen making your viola sabuco. White wine going in. Just a good splash. Let's allow that to evaporate. Again, okay, we're gonna keep the essence and the flavor of the wine and just let's lose the alcohol. Go back to my parsley meanwhile. Doesn't have to be too small, but just make an effort to have it as small as you can. A 
Back to the Osobuco. I got my veal stock, which is gonna be added to it. As you can see, there's plenty of moisture in there. And again, if you wanna allow this to cook for that couple of hours, it's definitely needed because either in the pan or in the oven, it's gonna evaporate. And of course, all the flavor will strengthen themselves and as all the liquid will reduce down. The level of salt and all the lovely flavors will increase a lot and it's gonna make it super tasty. As soon as we get to this stage, I'm gonna go in with my whole peel tomato. Just a couple, no more than that. And you don't really need to chop them up any earlier than that. All you need to do is just break them up with a spoon. And again, in a couple of hours, they will almost self-disintegrate. All the flavor will be just floating around my osobuco. And now, lastly, a couple of leaves, bay leaves. Okay, just a couple in. And I'm gonna put a lid on top and straight in the oven. First of all, just to be at safe, just open your oven first. Turn the heat off. Let's grab the pan straight into the oven. Oven preheated at about 160 degrees, and this is all I'm after. Now, it's very important. People always ask me, you know, is it important to use the right appliances? Of course it is. You want to have a good quality oven that cooks very, very nice and even. That will allow every single piece of meat in there, as much as it was for a souffle or whatever else, to cook nice and even. That takes about two hours. The idea is to have the meat that falls off the bone from the ossobuco. Ossobuco translates into um, bone with a hole, and this is exactly the, the bone that will be part of the shanks of where the ossobuco gets cut up. Inside, we have the lovely marrow, the bone marrow, which is tons of flavor. And of course, that will be melting through all of these lovely juices, and it's gonna make it taste just fantastic. So we're gonna kind of forget that for about an hour. We're gonna go back to it, turn it around, give it another hour. We perhaps let it rest a couple of minutes, and we'll be ready to serve it on top of our uh, risotto. Meanwhile, I need to finish my gremolata. So again, back to the parsley. Midway through it, I'm gonna get my lemon. Get yourself a zester or peel it any way you like. You just wanna get as much of the outside part of the lemon. Don't go too deep and pick up the white part because of course it will be fairly bitter and it's not gonna be anything pleasant. Okay. And finally, I just need a clove of garlic, just crushed, peeled, and chopped. Now, this is entirely up to you. You can use the whole garlic clove. I think it's a little bit too much, might be a little bit too strong. So just half a clove, it was quite a big one, and get everything chopped up together. So all the flavor already right now, we are you know, coming together. Then we're gonna sit these into a small bowl, a pinch of salt and pepper, and a little drizzle of olive oil. We don't wanna create a marinade, but just enough oil to allow all the flavors to come together. Okay, my grimolata, it's ready to go. Very simple, chopped parsley, lemon zest, a little bit of garlic, straight into a bowl. Chop it as fine as you can, but like I said, it's not, doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. And then finally, what we're gonna do, a pinch of salt, a little bit of cracked pepper, and extra virgin olive oil. Very important, good quality, because that's the flavor needed. Just a good drizzle. And then we just simply wanna mix it together until it turns all small into a paste, I will say. You just wanna bind them all together. I wish you could smell it. The smell of parsley and the, 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 the rind of the lemon is really coming through, and of course the garlic as well. Just a little touch more of uh, oil. And yet again, imagine doing that as a couple of hours before you're actually serving it. So it sits there and all the flavors come together and you know, it's just die for. So almost like a salsa verde. If you ever made a salsa verde, that's what probably consistency would look like, okay? So I'm gonna let these uh, sit aside until we're ready. Also, peas, got them over here, ready to go five, 10 minutes before my ossobucos are ready, we're gonna pop those in, they're gonna cook within the juices, release their flavor, everything comes together, it's just gonna taste sensational.
Okay, so plenty of juices over here. We can remove the osobuco and then put a drizzle on top. You can reduce the sauce to thicken it up a little bit more entire, entirely up to you. I'll show you how I will serve it. So I'm gonna get my serving plate. That's my plate. And also a little side dish for the gremolata. I'm gonna put some on top of my osobuco, but also a little bit extra, just in case people wanna do that. And always leave your parmigiano reggiano on the table so people can grate as much as they like on top of their risotto. So, gremolata. I'm gonna keep just a little bit to put on top of my osso buco, and I'll put the rest over here. Okay. Now, risotto. Give it another good stir. It's exactly what I mean, nice and runny. Just on a corner of a dish. Okay. Next step, I want to get my osso buco. Just lean that towards the risotto. Pick up lovely juices. Put on top of it and finally a little touch of the gremolata just on top of the osso buco. Okay and I think job done. Where I come from this is comforting food, it's traditional, it's Italian, it doesn't get any more classic and tasty than that. I hope you've enjoyed it, I hope you're gonna give it a go at home, please do it, you'll make my day, enjoy!